Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will demonstrate how to create backendless views, how to add columns to them, save views, and some very basic API usage. Uh, I plan to have a, a series of videos describing various features of the views. Uh, so, but for now, I recommend starting with uh, just a general introduction to the view. So you can see a link to that video on your screen right now. If you haven't uh, watched that video, I recommend starting with that one. Now, creating views. So before we actually create view, let's uh, uh, go over the database schema. Views are helpful whenever you use relations in Backendless Database. And relations is one of the features that makes Backendless Database extremely powerful, simply because you can organize your data in a way that is uh, that represents the entities in the real world. And relations, they uh, become very descriptive uh, when whenever objects are connected between each other. So let's take a look at the schema that I have put together that we will be using in these videos, uh, just uh, as the starting point. So here's the schema that I have. Let me zoom in a little bit. And uh, as you can see in the schema, these four tables are the ones that we will be working with. Uh, the organization of these... Uh, uh, tables as far as the relations are concerned is very, very simple. Uh, first of all, there is a table called organizations with some uh, uh, fictional organizations and then uh, organizations, each organization through the members uh, column, uh, it is a one to many relationship, has a, a relationship to the person table. So every organization has uh, in reality zero or more people. Every single person that we have here uh, has two relations. One of them is called addresses, and that addresses column points to the addresses table. Uh, and these are the addresses where that person, let's say, lives or works or somehow is related to that address. And uh, in the address table, the only column that uh, contains the data that we provide is city. These additional columns are system level columns, created object ID, owner ID, updated. Backendless provides uh, these columns for every single table out of the box. But the one that we are going to be working with is city. Also, every single person has, uh, through the column called hobbies, has a relationship to zero or more hobbies. And these are the hobbies that that person has. So this is, this is our schema. Uh, as far as the data is concerned, once again, let's start with the organizations. These are the organizations. And then as you can see, the relationship to its members. Then for person, uh, we have name, age, and uh, uh, related hobbies and related addresses. And as you can see here in the hobbies, once again, just a bunch of different hobbies that, uh, that I have put in. And as far as the addresses, just different cities. So that's, that's the schema that we're going to be working with. Let, let's go ahead and create our view. To create a view, it is exactly the same icon that you use to create tables right here, this plus. And in here, just select view and type in view name. So in here, I will type in people and address. Addresses. Uh, click create. The screen switches to the what we call view designer. And right here you see this view is under app views section. Whenever you have made some changes or whenever this view is very new and doesn't have any data, you will see this label that says not saved and it's bright yellow so you can see that there are some unsaved changes. The very first thing that you will need to do is by far or is going to be the most important. And uh, that uh, is going to be selecting your root table. And then what is a root table? Well, root table is going to be your very first table from which you uh, select the very first column. Why is it important? Well, simply because once you select the root table, that will define the scope of your view. And then the scope is essentially just all the related tables that stem from that root table. Uh, simply because whenever you compose a view, you cannot add unrelated tables or unrelated columns to your view. Therefore, selecting the first one is going to be very important. In my case, my overall schema has some additional tables here. Here's users, 
loggers, device registration. I do not care about those. I'm going to be focusing on this. So creating, uh, whenever you create a view, the very first column you select is going to designate that root table. Let's go ahead and select name from person. And to do this, just simply click the plus icon right here. And there you go. So, uh, couple of things happen. First of all, the name column is now added to the view. And then as you can see, the schema now contains just related tables and the canvas automatically determined what the scope of that view is. So it located all the related tables that stem from person. And here we have organizations, which is the parent table from person table perspective, and then two child tables, hobbies and address. Also, uh, as a preview of your view, the as, as soon as you add columns, it will fetch and show the data that exists uh, for that column for the specific table. Uh, whenever you look at the header, and this is just, by the way, just the preview, the, the actual view will be located in the data browser once the view is saved. But in the preview, it will display the column name. Whenever you move, move the mouse pointer over that uh, column name, you can see where that column is coming from. And here it says source person table column name. And then some additional icons. Uh, I will be going over each and every one of them in additional videos. Uh, the one that I'm going to point out now is this, this little X will delete that column from the view. So if you add a column and you don't need it, simply delete it. If you want to reset your root table, you would need to delete all the columns and then start over to designate the root table. Uh, but at this point, so far, it's it's very straightforward. So here we have person. How about adding related city name? And for this, all you need to do is click plus on city. And there you go. We got cities. And then the combinations of the name and city are going to be the meaningful combinations, meaning that if we have a record from a person table where the name is Jack, their related city is going to be Tokyo. By the way, some people in my person table may have multiple addresses. Like for instance, let's take a look at Kate. As you can see, we have Kate and then the city is Paris. And then another Kate, well, it's actually the same Kate, city Chicago. So Backendless will automatically pull all possible combinations that make sense. Well, all of them will make sense, but basically all the combinations for each person, it will get all the related cities. Okay. If you want to add something else, for instance, you can go to the parent table, which is organizations and click name for that organization. There you go. And now we got the corresponding organization for, for that person. So here we're composing a view that contains multiple columns from multiple tables. But whenever you work with this view, it will basically provide all of this information at once with a single query. By the way, notice that whenever we added name from organizations, it renamed this column to name underscore two, which is the default naming convention, simply because the same view cannot have different columns that have the same name. Therefore, it renamed it for you. However, you can rename it to anything you want. Notice there is this little green tag, which is a, a label. And that's whenever you have alias for a table, this is an indication that this has been renamed. In fact, if you move the mouse over this, it says source organizations table column name, but it appears as name underscore two, which is not pretty. So let's click this label and uh, change this to organization name. Click save. So now it is organization name. So far, so good. And uh, at this point, we will not be doing anything else, although there is a bunch of functionality that once again, I will be reviewing in additional videos. Let's go ahead and save this view. Here it is. It is saved. And if you go to data browser, now we have this virtual table, our view that can be used to fetch data from different tables. The beautiful thing from the API perspective, it is going to be exactly the same API as you would use with tables. So for instance, if you are building an application and you're fetching data from your tables, you will know what that API looks like. And you simply just need to use this view name to fetch this data. And that applies to REST, API, Android, iOS, JavaScript, Flutter, .NET, 
all of them are compatible and you're going to basically get the same structure. So it's going to be uh, JSON if you're using REST, if you use uh, Android or iOS or .NET, you can get them as a uh, as objects completely up to you. All the same API rules are applicable. Well, uh, for instance, let me demonstrate how to do, for instance, uh, how to fetch data using API. Uh, for this, we're going to cheat a little bit. There is going to be two different ways to get the actual URL to, to get data. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, I will show you just one of them. So for instance, if you go to a table, let's pick this address and you go to rest console, this request URL, if we copy it and open it up in a, in another browser, actually, let me move this browser in, put this URL in there. This fetches addresses. Okay. Now, if I, replace this address right here, which is the name of the table, with the name of my view, people and addresses. Here's an API call that just fetches all the objects from the view. And as you can see, we have this name, city, organization name, exactly the same thing as you would see right here. Okay, so that means that the API is going to be consistent. It works exactly the same way. So if you're building applications with AppGyver, uh, Adalo, Bubble, uh, or within Backendless itself, it's going to be exactly the same API. Now, uh, once again, there is a ton of functionality, both in the data browser, as you can see, there are some menu items here, and there is a, a, a lot in the uh, uh, view designer. But I'm going to save uh, this for other videos. For now, I just wanted to demonstrate this basic concept for selecting individual columns, adding them to the view, saving, and just how to fetch data in the most basic way. Uh, there are other ways. That it gets richer and richer. But for now, uh, I'm going to stop. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, happy coding!